This video is sponsored by Wondrium. With the ubiquity of social media, it's becoming increasingly simple for the ne'er-do-wells of the internet to use our personal information against us. They can steal our profile pictures for catfishing, fill our email with spam, and even use our own interests against us. So, when the recently divorced Jody decided to return to the dating scene, she never thought that it would result in a $45,000 debt and an embarrassment that millions of people across the world feel every day. Um, the, um, dating game is anxiety-inducing enough without the added pressure of putting divorcee on your dating profile. When Jody finally got out of her marriage of 23 years, she was initially hesitant to use online dating, but with the encouragement of a friend, she finally relented and downloaded Tinder. She constructed her profile perfectly, mentioned her love of camping and kayaking, and even included her favorite song, Meant to Be. It wasn't long before she met Andy, a bit of a scruffy dude who wore a baseball cap, and, much to Jody's delight, his teeth were pristine. They met for a date in a Starbucks in Kelowna, BC, Canada, where she found out that they shared the same favorite song. She talked about her dog, her career as a health analyst. He told her about his work on offshore oil rigs, how he lived in Vietnam, and how he was ready to slow down and enjoy his life with someone special. A first date quickly turned into a second, and a second into a third. Jody discovered that Andy, whose real name was Andre, had also just gotten out of a rocky marriage and grew up with parents struggling with addiction. They both hated the same foods, and when Andre told her that he was falling for her, she knew everything he said was exactly what I wanted to hear, she remarked later. Jody was in love. It totally made sense to start planning their life together. Andre, who Jody lovingly named Dre, had to go back to his home in Vietnam to retrieve some of his money. It was mostly in gold bars, he explained, and they could go on a trip together to get them, like a honeymoon. The only problem was that he first needed to get recertified to take a job delivering water to oil rigs out in Edmonton to finance the trip. He asked if he could borrow $500 for the course. Jody was wary at first, but he ensured her that it was just because he couldn't access his own money, and once they were in Vietnam, he would pay her back in spades. A single bar of gold was worth three times as much. I'm doing this for our future, he told her. Now, it's not recommended that anyone believe in what people say without questioning, but it might surprise you how even reputable sources can trick you. Wondrium, the online learning service, has a whole series, The Skeptic's Guide to Health, Medicine, and the Media, presented by Dr. Roy Benarok about how media and science don't always work together. Dr. Benarok taught me just how important nuance is to properly representing science. News headlines about arsenic powder in baby formula gets clicks, but it's not necessarily giving you all the relevant information you need. Wondrium, if you're not familiar, is the new brand for all of the Great Courses Plus content that we know and love. Wondrium is a place for minds that wonder. They have a massive video catalog of over 6,000 hours of content on everything from how to write best-selling fiction to forensic history, all academically researched, relentlessly entertaining, and presented by experts of the field. But really, if you've ever sat up at night and wondered about anything, Wondrium will become your new favorite place. Go to wondrium.com brew for a free trial, or click the link in the description below. After a month of dating, Dre departed for the job in Edmonton, telling Jody that he'd miss her every day. Only a few days later, he called her to mm. let her know he'd been having some chest pains. A doctor recommended he return to Kelowna. Jody's father had died of a heart attack years ago, so she was obviously worried and agreed wholeheartedly. Dre returned and planted himself down on her couch. Dre subcontracted the first part of the job to one of his employees, and he'd still make a cut. He went back to Edmonton a week later and was in contact with her at all times. He sent her timesheets, invoices, and Excel sheets full of data on all kinds of subjects. Ah, yes. The classic lover's gift. Spreadsheets. Do, do you dare? Unfortunately, right before Jody expected him back, he called saying he was in trouble for unpaid taxes. He had a check coming in for around $49,000, but if he put it into his own bank account, then the government would snatch it up. 
Even worse, if he had to pay back the Canada Revenue Agency, then he wouldn't have the money to pay his subcontractors, and they wouldn't be able to take their trip to Vietnam. He had an idea though, something so crazy it just might work. He'd have his employer write the check out to her instead of him. She was concerned about the legality, but he said their names would soon be on the same checks anyway, right? What could go wrong? Dre FaceTimed Jody when he e-transferred the 49 grand check into Jody's account and had her send him back $19,500. Enough to pay his contractors, but not so much as to get flagged by the CRA. A few days later, Jody was in Vegas for a wedding and spent most of the weekend with old friends and family. She danced, drank, and obviously told everyone about her new boyfriend who was taking her to Vietnam in just two weeks. She was glowing, according to her friends. It all came crashing down when she returned to Kelowna. She went to the grocery store to get dinner supplies for her and Dre, who was returning from Edmonton. Strangely though, her debit card declined at the checkout. She tried a second card, but it likewise declined. Embarrassed, she called a friend to send her some money, and while she waited, the dots began to connect in her mind. Back home, she logged on to her online banking. It revealed her worst fears. Dre's check hadn't gone through, and now she was stuck with nearly $20,000 worth of overdraft fees. Including the money she had lent him for work, she was out over $45,000. What had begun as an unassuming sortie into the world of online dating had concluded with shame and embarrassment. But romance scams aren't new. In fact, they've been a regular side effect of matrimony since we first started marrying. Back in 1884, a magazine entitled The Matrimonial Herald and Fashionable Marriage Gazette would let men and women looking to court to either place personal ads in the magazine or work directly with staff to procure a match. Oh, I feel like it's a lot like how sites like Plenty of Fish work today, right? Is that the aquarium store where you bought your goldfish? Oh, R.I.P. Jeff Goldblub. Yeah, actually, we need to talk about that. But, uh, anyway, yes, exactly. The majority of the magazine's clients were men, but the magazine was very vocal about the many wealthy women who mailed in looking for husbands. That's super weird. It super is, all of this is, but it was a major selling point. In the 19th century, marriage was seen as one of the primary ways for individuals to advance socially, not just for men, but for women even more so, since many were barred from holding jobs. Men would respond to the ads in the Herald via mail and receive an invitation to join the World's Great Marriage Association for a fee of 2.5% of the bride's wealth when the pair was married. In this case, they meant a percentage of her dowry, but men could also opt to pay a small sum of £12 instead. Accounting for inflation, that's about £1,500 today, which is about $2,000 US. That's expensive. Tinder Gold is only $82.99 a year, and Plenty of Fish is $81.40. Not that I know offhand, I had to look it up. The fee was a small price to pay if you were going to set up for life with the wealthy woman of your dreams. The uh, only problem was the World's Great Marriage Association never intended to follow through on its lofty promises. Their matches were significantly less wealthy than they so generously advertised. Instead of pairing up the working class men and women who sent into the magazine with wealthy spouses, they were matched with other working class folks who had also paid the entry fee. Did anyone actually get hitched with rich people? Absolutely not. After operating the scam for 12 years, the association was finally raided by the police, and in the trial that followed, the members of the fraud did almost nothing to argue their innocence. Historian Angus McLaren writes that they intended to appeal to the social superiority of the judge and the all-male jury by attacking the complainants as socially marginal characters who, stupidly believing the impossible, did not deserve the protection of the law. So, victim blaming? That's, that's not cool. <laughs> The association knew that wealthy individuals from moneyed families would far prefer to arrange a marriage through a months-long marriage season for all the pretty ladies and handsome fellas to go courting. At the time, it was also shameful to marry below one's status. They also knew that members of the lower classes had far fewer options than those from the upper echelons and were ripe for exploitation. In the end, the jury convicted three of the association's major players who were sentenced to prison. 
Unfortunately, before the trial was done, multiple bouts of laughter had erupted from the viewing gallery at the expense of those who were scammed. Both of our cases are examples of romance scams, but there are other kinds as well that we haven't talked about, like catfishing. Catfishing. Like when you pretend to be beloved Canadian actor and entrepreneur, Ryan Rodney Reynolds. It's a specific kind of romance scam, where a person pretends to be someone they're not. The term catfishing actually comes from a 2010 documentary of the same name. In it, a 28-year-old photographer, Nev Shulman, discovers that the beautiful young woman he had been seeing on Facebook was actually a middle-aged woman. The term itself was coined using a metaphor for shipping cod from Alaska to China. The cod would be transported live in tanks on ships, but by the time the fish reached their destination, their flesh was mushy and tasteless. So the shipping companies decided to add some catfish to the tanks to keep the cod moving around. Where real catfish keep cod on their proverbial toes, and fake catfish keep us on ours. For the would-be catfish, social media has opened many doors for would-be scammers to take advantage of your likes and interests. Your online persona is basically a giant study sheet of what you care about. When Jody listed her favorite song on her Tinder profile, Dre knew exactly what to say to make her think they were meant to be. Wait, wait, wait. We love the exact same song? <laughs> the one listed on your public profile? What a coincidence! According to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, romance scams have cost Canadians at least $26 million in 2018. But the damage goes much further than that. Spokesperson for the CAFC, Lissam Beauchamp, says that the attitude around fraud is not that you were specifically targeted, but that you were gullible enough to be conned. Anyone can fall for scams like these. But the most common victims are women from age 40 to 60 with post-secondary degrees. However, the real number of male victims may be much higher since men are even less likely to report being scammed. Stigma keeps those who have been scammed from coming forward, and it also makes others more vulnerable to scams. And, on top of that, scammers seek out individuals who are already isolated. An FTC survey found that those who had recently experienced trauma were two and a half times more likely to have experienced fraud than those who hadn't. It's a wide and dangerous world out there, becoming murkier by the day. Information we share on social media may seem innocuous, harmless even, but in the wrong hands, it can spell disaster. At the end of the day, the best thing we can do to fight against scammers is to practice empathy and compassion. The best thing we can do to protect ourselves is to protect one another. If, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and click on that like button and maybe even leave a comment. We, we post once a week, so, so to keep up on all our newest releases, you can subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you're always notified when we upload. And uh, with that said, I, gu I guess I'll see you next time.